everyone. Hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your day. Wanted to hop on and explain to you a very, very important stance that we have to have in our lives as a Christian. You guys repeat after me. We do not negotiate with the devil. Amen. We do not negotiate with the devil. I want to read you guys some scripture out of the book of Exodus today and talk about the significance of basically what Pharaoh tried to manipulate Moses into before he was willing to fully release the Israelites from a place of slavery and from a place of bondage, okay? Um, so we're going to be in Exodus chapter 10 today in verses 8 through 12, and it says the following. So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go serve the Lord your God, who specifically are the ones that are going with you. Moses said, We will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds, all of us, and all that we have, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. Pharaoh said to them, The Lord be with you to help you if I ever let you go with your children because you will never return. Look, be forewarned. You have an evil plan in mind. No, now go, you who are men without your families and serve the Lord, if that is what you want. So Moses and Aaron were driven from Pharaoh's presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, okay? So this conversation was happening in the midst of the plagues, okay? So by this point in the book of Egypt, Several plagues had already hit. And so at this point, Pharaoh is getting a little bit desperate. So he's willing to give a little bit, but not completely, right? And so if they had given up in a place of weariness at this moment, Moses and Aaron, right? They could have sacrificed a big portion of their promise. Amen. And so Moses was like, no, we are not leaving a single thing in Egypt, right? Um, and so then we see the next plague was going to be the darkness over the land. And in this scripture, we're still going to be in Exodus chapter 10, but we're going to start now in verse 23. It says, The Egyptians could not see one another, nor did anyone leave his place for three days. But all the Israelites had supernatural light in their dwellings. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Only your flocks and your herds must be left behind. Even your children may go with you. But Moses said, you must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings so that we may sacrifice them to the Lord our God. Therefore, our livestock must also go with us. Not one hoof shall be left behind, for we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God. Even we do not know with what we will serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to let them go. Then Pharaoh said to Moses, get away from me. See that you never enter my presence again. For on the day that you face me again, you will die. And Moses said, you're correct. I'll never see your face again. And then after that, we learned that the last plague happened. And of course, we know that that represents the death of the firstborn. Finally, Pharaoh releases them and they leave. But notice how much warfare was going on, right? Pharaoh was threatening Moses with death right at the end there. A lot of times we don't think about this um, and kind of the intensity with which, you know, Moses was faced with as representing the people in this moment. But notice how Moses did not budge. Amen. He was feeling very threatened. I'm sure that they were very tired. Think about how many plagues had already happened by this particular point in time. It was quite a bit that they had actually lived through. Um, so they had been through several different types of plagues. They had been through um, the water turning to blood. I'm just going to call out a few of them. The frogs over the land, the plague of the gnats and the insects. They had been through the Egyptian cattle dying, the plague of boils, the plague of hail, the plague of locusts, um, just all kinds of stuff even prior to this point. And that's what the devil does. He will hit you when you are tired. He will hit you when you're already feeling hopeless. Like, man, is there even a chance we're going to have the total victory? Maybe I should just settle for less than the promise. Maybe I should shouldn't believe God for total victory in these areas of my life. You know, he will try to hit you in that place. And I want to tell you guys that we need to do exactly what Moses did in this particular passage. We do not negotiate with the devil. We do not compromise on the promises that God has spoken over our lives. We believe him and we will not settle 
until we get the entire promise. Amen. And so I want to encourage those of you guys who are weary today, please don't give up. Amen. And understand that that's when the devil will try to come in and make you offers. He will try to get you to compromise on your walk, to settle for less than the promise, to give up, to get discouraged in your personal life. And I want to tell you guys, we don't negotiate with the devil, period right? We don't take him up on his little offer this that he tries to throw out to us in our lives. No, we stand firm on the word of the Lord and we trust that God is going to fight for us and to see us through and that he will deal with Pharaoh. He will deal with the devil, but our job is to not give in too soon or too early in a place of weariness or when we are just wanting to give up in the fight. Don't you dare give up. For a lot of you guys, you are in the last leg of this journey and that's why the warfare has been so intense but i want to tell you guys don't compromise because god's still going to come through for you amen hope you guys have a great day i'll chat with you again soon